Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it was a very fortuitous way to end there, talking about creative education, so I'm just going to follow on from uh, that last question and uh, the response by Chris Smith. Uh, I'm going to tell a story about creative education uh, and possibly uh, creative entrepreneurship, um, and most importantly, how central uh, creative people, creative practitioners are uh, to that narrative. But talking about the creative economy or creative industries, my key question is what makes some creative economies more successful than others? And I'm talking from my own experience as someone who was closely involved in uh, the post-industrial transformation of Glasgow uh, through culture as both an educator and a curator. In Scotland, where I come from, the creative economy supports over 80,000 jobs and is worth over five billion pounds, about over six billion euros. It is huge economically and it's growing year on year. What's also interesting is that underpinning uh, Scotland's creative economy are 50,000 students and over 4,000 teachers on creative courses in universities and colleges. And those jobs and those courses have a value of about a quarter of a billion pounds. So for a sector that is dependent on a continuing stream of fresh talent, creative education has to be the answer to the question about what makes a more successful creative economy. Creative education is not only valuable economically in its own right, that quarter of a billion pounds uh, that's invested in education in our country, I believe it's the missing part of the creative econo economy narrative. And if we are talking about economic growth, and social renewal using creativity and changing the paradigm, then creative education is absolutely key. Why creative education is fundamentally important is because it's in, about engagement. And people and children are best and work best when they are engaged. And engagement, engagement with services, with products, with environments, and with customers, and with audience, audiences are absolutely essential to the creative economy. And it's why building creative partnerships between education and creative practice, as Chris mentioned, like the Creative uh, Partnerships Programme, has become such a crucial part of uh, European policy. But I'm not going to talk about statistics or measurement. What I want to talk about is what I think is the real value of creative education. And for me, that's about five things. The importance of creative education at all stages, from kindergarten to university and beyond. Leadership and partnership in education, particularly the role of art schools in the creative economy. Skills development, lifelong learning and continuous professional development. Innovation and engagement and strategies for engagement. It's not just creative education in universities that's important, in art schools, drama schools and film and TV courses. It's about education, educating for a more creative society generally, creativity within a lifelong perspective. In Scotland, a quiet revolution has been happening. There has been a push to embed creativity right across the curriculum of five to 18 year olds, going beyond the STEM to STEAM paradigm, really trying to embed creativity in every single subject in the school. We have a national plan for creativity in schools. And there are two reasons why I think that plan is so important. One is that it's conducive to the growth of both the creative economy and the economy more generally. And the other is that it points up the importance of resources to encourage creativity in schools. Along with this national plan for creativity, it's quite a brilliant set of online digital resources that have been created for young people and their teachers. And maybe this offers lessons for countries elsewhere. And central to this development and this is really important, the development of these resources has been the involvement of creative people themselves, artists, dancers, engineers, art uh, painters, whose lived experiences in the creative economy have been turned into videos to inspire kids in school. And central to the development of these resources has been the involvement of all sorts of creative people. And this is funda fundamentally important in the context of creative education engagement with creative practitioners and creative practice, bringing young people and creative practitioners closer together, breaking down barriers, and increasing understanding of the role of the 
of creativity in the economy and society. This is also important in university and the professional education of creatives that bridge to the real world. And universities have se several roles to play in the creative economy. Nurturing talent, developing skills and employability, uh, and entrepreneurship and research and innovation. But they have a wider role acting as anchors for regional clusters, engaging industry and supporting networks. But I think the big as yet unfulfilled role for universities is in creative and cultural leadership. In the case of my own art school, my own university, it has been proactive in leading on the production of a strategy for the region's creative economy. The plan is called Creating a New, Nor New North and it has four interconnecting aims. Assisting the business community and cultural organisations increase the quality of life, promoting talent attraction and retention, connecting quality of life, creative uh, economy and culture, and creating a clear narrative around cultural heritage, provenance, identity, especially in terms of tourism, the thing that Chris Smith mentioned uh, earlier. And making that link between the creative and cultural industries and tourism is really important, especially for a country like Scotland. And for a university, for the university sector, this offers a live context as a focus for research and innovation with a potential for real impact in building creative partnerships between education and business. Universities are key providers of skills for creative industries, but what is really exciting is how creative and cultural industries are taking responsibility for their own professional development through creative networks. All the research in the UK shows that creative and cultural industries, which by and large are at the small end of the SME scale, micro-businesses, that they are under-resourced, under-financed and underdeveloped in terms of business, marketing and other skills. And creative networks, like you can see here, are a convivial way to address those shortfalls and they're getting much more strategic and much more business savvy. And of course they're successful when they're run by and for creative people themselves and when they have a real business development focus. As an example on the screen uh, that you see these creative networks from two Scottish cities from Edinburgh and Dundee, one of their advantages is the opportunity they present for peer coaching, learning from one another and bridging the gap between professional training and professional practice. Across Europe, people are demanding more and more of public services and greater personalisation in services generally. And this needs creativity and innovation. It also raises the question of spillover into the wider economy and society. Something that universities are getting better at, but there's a lot more work needed in this regard, is incubating creative startups. And where universities combine this with research and innovation, for example, into new territories like the demand for improved public services, or the growing field of social entrepreneurship, the results can be very exciting. On screen, the example here, Snook are a young uh, company of recent art school design graduates based in Glasgow. They set up their company when they were at art school and they're part of a new wave of community consultants who use co-creative strategies to engage with a wide range of communities. In a sense, they symbolize all of the issues I've been trying to talk about. Namely, entrepreneurship, they recognise opportunities. They're developing the right skills to work in the public sector through networking and research. They're leaders in an entrepreneurial network. They have set up a company called Night Riders, bringing social uh, and creative entrepreneurs together. They have a novel business model called Snook Ensemble, which is a multidisciplinary team that addresses the challenges of, this, of the project economy, where small micro businesses have to come together to create critical mass to take on a project and the, the challenge of scaling up and the need for small creative companies to draw on a wide range of skills. What's also interesting about Snook and unusual about them is how they engage with policy on education, on health and with cities. So for example, they've worked with teachers using design thinking to help them be more creative in the classroom and they've worked with municipalities and with cities to address the challenges of, for example, empty high street shops caused by the downturn, downturn in the economy, or with the health service to try and improve the service to the public. 
Although Snook is a company of eight people, very typical for the creative economy and for creative industries, with an extended network, they also have a number of startups and spin up, spin up, spin outs. They generate startups and spin outs themselves. Psychohacks is one example. Psychohack is a 48 hour event that brings people together to solve barriers to cycling. And as well as dreaming up ideas and prototyping solutions, it showcases speakers, workshops, and presentations. And cycle hacks have taken place in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Brisbane, Beirut. And Snook have now opened up cycle hack for cities to apply to host their own cycle hacks event. They've now curated over 30 events and locations across the globe, uh, and even more will be staged uh, across the world next summer. And one of the ideas that came out of cycle hacks uh, was a penny in your pants, a design solution to the problem of wearing skirts or kilts on a bike that uses a penny and a rubber band to hold the skirt in place and stop it rubbing against uh, the bicycle. And the Vimeo that's been produced has now been seen by over three million people. From pennies and rubber bands, Snook have now developed prototypes which they are taking to market, crowdsourcing the finance, building on the marketing offered by the global views that the Vimeo, Vimeo has had and the coverage in social media, as well as the coverage in titles like Cosmopolitan, Huffington Post and Marie Claire. And I think in the small example of a small company, there are lessons for the creative economy. The importance of embedding entrepreneurship in university courses. Snook benefited from internships with business while they were at university, while they were at art school. How Psychohacks created a social experience and a network with learning opportunities through peer coaching and co-creativity. And social experiences and networking are now recognised as important factors in competitiveness. They were also alive to new opportunities like positioning yourselves as community consultants, connecting to policy to maximise opportunities in urban education and economic and social policy, being aware of and using the huge potential of technology and social media to create a multi-layered event project like Psychohacks, and using a large-scale creative event to harvest and prototype new ideas and products and to take them to market, and how Snook moved seamlessly from conventional design to social design and managed to marry somehow economic with public and cultural value. So the challenge, I think, just to round off, is that the creative economy is an optimistic, orange, progressive narrative. The leadership challenge for policymakers, influencers, business, uh, and for creative practitioners, for creative people themselves, if the economy is to achieve its potential, whether you're in the United Kingdom or in Greece, is about innovating ways for the creative industries to engage with the Greek and European research system its innovation system, the public sector, and for European and Greek enterprises uh, to engage with themselves as well as engage globally. And in that context, creative education and creative entrepreneurship is absolutely key in developing the necessary skills, the networks, and the communities. So just to round off, I think what's really important is that support has to be focused on the real experiences of creative people and it has to be tailored and customised to meet their real needs. Thanks very much.